Hi, I'm Trevor Lund from RevTrev.com, and uh, we are uh, having a discussion with Cheryl Shea about questions that RevTrev readers have uh, come up with uh, or asked me about. And Cheryl is a uh, counselor at EdmontonCounselingServices.com, and uh, she does counseling over Skype, and she's an author of Soul Surgeon, and she, she's just uh, an amazing woman all around. And so I really do appreciate her helping me with some of these questions. Welcome, Cheryl. Hi. <laughs> How are you today, Trevor? It's good. It's been a while since we've done these. People might not notice because we release them over time, but this is this is I good. Know. <laughs> and it's like the middle of February in Alberta, which means it's not quite 30 below, which is really nice. That's amazing. Yeah, but yeah, if they watch us in the summer, they won't care to know that. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, uh, the question I have for, for you today, uh, somebody, uh, a reader asked me this and... and um, her question was, how do I overcome fear about death in the future? You know, my first response was, well, you know, are you a Christian? Do you know Christ? Do you know that he, you know, he's, he's not just the God of today. He's the God of eternity. And that's, that's our, that's our joy. And that's our hope. But, you know, I know Christians are out there that, that do have the fear of death and, and have other fears associated with death. So how, how would you respond to that question? How do I overcome fear about death in the future? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I I, I know um, that's that's really key to know that there's a merciful a merciful God and that He prefers you in heaven than the other place, and and so that that spiritual journey is really important, as you mentioned. Um, but I also know that many christian believers are afraid of death and sometimes that's for reasons that are not necessarily i guess overtly spiritual okay. um sometimes we're we're afraid of the process of dying you know i'm gonna oh, get yeah. sick or you know something like that um especially if we've maybe seen that with someone else or experienced it you know with a with a parent or something that we don't like suffering in our society, so yeah. we don't like to think that we might have to physically suffer, right? Mm -hmm. um, another aspect to that is that we're afraid of dying alone. Mm -hmm. And I know I went through a real difficult season in my early 40s about that. And uh, it was, it was, I was single, I was, I had some close friends, but there was this real fear of being alone at the end of life. And I did manage to work through that with the Lord. And surprisingly, what it came out to wasn't so much a fear of dying alone as a fear of not having a legacy, mm. because I don't have children. Um, and the thing that really helped was around that season, I did a trip to England and before I went, people advised me I should make a will. And up until that time in my life, I, I hadn't because, again, I'm single. There's no dependents, that kind of thing. And um, so I did make up a will. And then through that, I was able to leave money to charities that were important to me, some people that were important to me. And that, for some reason, actually really settled my heart. Mm. And I, I can't even really explain it, but it sort of, uh, it, it did help. Um, the other thing that can happen is that sometimes people are afraid of death because actually what they're doing is they have an experience and then they're almost on the verge of a panic attack. So example is um, they might have a pain in their body and then they jump to, oh, I'm going to die. Right. And, and that in counselor lingo is anxiety or fear. They're almost unable to live in the present moment. And so then we're spending too much time projecting about the what ifs in the future. And, and, um, and, and how do you, uh, catastrophize? Catastrophize. <laughs> okay. Catastrophize. So it's like, it's like, uh, you know, I ha like I said, I have a pain in my shoulder. Oh my goodness, I'm having a heart attack. I'm going to die. Right. Or, um, um, my and, boss. And if you have had a heart attack, that's what could bring it on, right? You've had that experience. Right, or, or someone you know had a heart attack, right. or just that you have fear in your life in general, mm. right? Mm. Just fear and anxiety in general, which can be spiritual. It can be a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. or it can be um, it, anxiety is kind of the flip side of clinical depression, so it can be a medical thing. So 
if you find that you do that, so one thing happens, like um, you go out and you start your car and it doesn't quite start properly. And most people are like, yeah, okay, we'll just try it a few more times. Maybe it's the battery. You're like, oh my goodness, my car is going to blow up on the way to work or my new car is going to totally die. Then that's catastrophizing. Oh, okay. So that's something you need to talk with the counselor about and, mm. and work through. And so that might be sometimes where people have the fear of death is it's something, something, you know, significant but small in the present that becomes a huge issue. So it's not really about fear of death. It's about this lie mm -hmm. that gets shouted in your head from yourself and enforced from the enemy that causes you to think, oh, my goodness, I'm going to die. So as a counselor, how do you help someone overcome that? It's just, is that over time you start breaking down the lies or you start, you yeah, start, start bring, bringing, bringing the you, truth? Or? You need to kind of find out a bit where that, you know, when did that start? You know, there mm -hmm. might be some, some indication around that. I mean, the biggest thing really is to recognize that pattern of catastrophizing. Because mm -hmm. once you realize that you're doing it, then, you, you know, you can start going, oh, yeah, this is ridiculous. Mm. I have a toe and I'm thinking I'm having a heart attack. This is crazy. Like, you know, <laughs> and, and also uh, we live in a very, I mean, this is part of it, is we live in a very fear-based culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy watching the news to find out what's going on in the world, but I realized many years ago that our news media is very much based on fear. Yeah. Um, and so if you are prone to fear, you need to, to really limit your connection with stuff like that. You need to not read murder mysteries. You need to, you know, anything that sort of encourages that fear in your life, you need to, you need to get it out. And um, part of that too is recognizing, um, a friend pointed this out to me personally a few years ago, is I was dealing with fear in a certain area of my life and I'd sort of get that under control with the Lord. And then a few weeks later, I'd have this fear about something else. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, the problem with fear is is the spirit of fear. You get it controlled, you get it broken in one area, and then it sort of reinvents itself somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it can be for some people a constant that they have to deal with. So you might conquer the fear of death mm -hmm. and then have a fear of losing your job or, you know, some other thing. So just to be aware that, that it can be a spirit and it can be psychological, but to really with the with the death or with thinking some horrific thing is going to happen to you when there's really no, no legitimate reason is catastrophizing. And if you can identify catastrophizing, you're you're a long way to breaking that and being free of that. I, you know, I think it's something we all we all kind of go through. Like there was there was a there was a season in my life where nothing automatic would work for me, right? Like so, automatic doors would not open. Did I tell you this story? Yes. And, and, and I couldn't wash my hands or I couldn't dry my hands or yeah. Anyway, I was, I was starting to feel a little bit stressed, but yeah, um, yeah that <laughs> I could definitely see if that pattern continued, I'd be really thinking the world was out to get me. Um, but anyway, they, Cheryl, people can contact you on uh, at Edmonton counseling services.com. That's two L's for counseling. And, um, I would encourage you to do that. Cheryl uh, does uh, counseling over Skype. And so that's something that's available to somebody anywhere in the world, as long as you can figure out the time zones. And um, <laughs> it's, yeah. thank you so much, Cheryl, for this uh, this edition of Coach's, Cor or Coach's Corner. Of <laughs> Counsel <laughs> Counselor's Corner. Counseling. I forget yeah. what I'm doing. Anyway, take okay, care. Bye, Trevor. Bye. Bye.